Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and EscapeRoomElectronics.com. Uh, this is the our, our new ultrasonic receiver module uh, assembly video. The transmitter assembly video and the video manual for both can be found below. I'll have this listed at EngineeringShock.com very soon. Uh, so let me show you what comes with this kit. <coughs> Excuse me, we've got six 100k ohm resistors, uh, a 10k ohm resistor, a 180 ohm resistor, Three 30k ohm resistors, three 16k ohm resistors, a 14 dips pin dip socket, a 14 pin dip quad op amp chip LM324, three NPN 2N2222 uh, transistors, four 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors, a 7 pin header, a 3 pin header, a 2 pin header, and a 2 pin jumper, an ultrasonic receiver sensor, and uh, what else do we have here? We've got uh, two. 5K, uh, 50k ohm uh, 10 turn potentiometers, variable resistors, a 78LO5 5 volt regulator, 3 and 3 uh, 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors. So first things first, let's solder the resistors into place. Everything is labeled on the PCB, but you're going to need a closer look. So again, here are all the resistors, uh, 6 10Ks, 180K, 10K, sorry, 6 100Ks, if I didn't say that right the first time, one 180K, one 10K, um, three 16K, and three 30K. So now I'm going to look at the board up close. Okay, so our 100K ohm resistors are labeled 100K, and that's R1, 100K, R2, 100K, um, R6, R5, uh, R9, and R10. They're all labeled 100K. Uh, right here there's a 200K, I believe that's, it's hard to see from this angle, I believe it's R13, it's labeled 200K, we're just going to use a 100K, 180K ohm resistor there. Right here, R14, to label 10K, we'll place our single 10K ohm resistor there. Now we've got our three 16K ohm resistors and they go in the R3 slot, labeled R3 16K, uh, R7 16K, and... R1116 K. Lastly, our 30 K ohm resistors. They go in R4 30 K, R8 30 K, and lastly R12 30 K. So solder those all into place. Make sure there's no shorts. Nice clean solder joints, and uh, then we will solder in our ceramic capacitors. The ceramic capacitors have no positive or negative, they are not polarized, so uh, we can solder them directly into the correct slots very easily. Uh, right here, C7, C1, uh, C4, and C3. Solder them into place, and next we will solder in our headers. Our 7-pin header goes here, our 2-pin header goes here, and our 3-pin header goes right there. So let's solder those into place. Make sure that there are no shorts after you're done. Hold on to your 2-pin header, put it aside. It's very important to note that the 78LO5 5V regulator and the three NPN transistors look the exact same. They all have writing on them. Make sure that you separate your 2N2222 transistors from the 78LO5. So let's solder in our single 5V regulator, the 78LO5. 78LO5 is in the upper right hand corner. As you can see on the footprint, there is a curved side of the footprint and a flat side, the flat side being on the bottom with two pins. Make sure that from a bird's eye view that the 7805, which also has a flat side and a curved side, fits in like that. We're going to follow those instructions for the transistors as well. Once we solder in the transistors, we want to make sure that we line up from a bird's eye view the curved side of the transistor and the flat side. As you can see, our three transistors here here and here. Solder in your 2N2222 NPN transistors here and making sure that you do not reverse them. Flat side from a bird's eye view to the flat side on the footprint and curved side from a bird's eye view to the uh, curved side on the footprint. Very simple step, just make sure that you have no soldering shorts when you solder in your socket. The socket goes right here. There's a notch on the left side of the footprint as you can see right there. And there's a notch on the socket and a notch on the op amp chip. So place from a bird's eye view the notch facing the left. Uh, and once you've soldered in your socket, place your chip inside with the notch facing the left. Turn your chip around with the notch facing the right and you're going to blow your chip. Do not do that. There are three electrolytic capacitors, 10 microfarad, 
and they've all got a long lead, which is positive, and a short lead, which is negative. Keep that in mind. Long lead is positive. We've got a slot here, here, and here. In the case of this one, we've got the plus sign right here on the lower hole, so the place your long lead on the lower hole here. In the case of this capacitor, positive sign is above the left hole, long lead in the left hole. Same with this capacitor. Positive sign above the, le above the left hole, long lead in the left hole. If you reverse any of those, don't be surprised if they pop when you power it up. The two potentiometers, variable resistors, have uh, adjusting nuts on the top of them, screws, um, and on the top right side of them. The two footprints have a little screw indicator. Make sure from a bird's eye view that the top screws uh, fit in line with the screw indicators on the footprints. This is the negative pad, this is the positive pad. This is the negative pin, this is the positive pin. The way you can t differentiate between the positive and negative pin is there's a little circle around the plastic at the base of the negative pin. So what we're going to do is first things first, we're going to add a big glob of solder to the negative pad. Add a counterweight to the back of the board and place the back, the front of the board off, a ta off the uh, end of a table. What I've done is I've added a bit of solder to the negative pin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to situate this on top, heat them, bond them together, and make sure that they're flat against the board. Then I'm going to solder the second pin. Just like that. Thank you for following along with me. Check out the video links below. One is a video manual that shows you how to use this and the transmitter, and one is a transmitter um, assembly video. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great day.